If you're new to the channel, welcome. Otherwise, welcome back. So today we're going to look at the Q167, the LFO++ from Synthesizers.com. I'm pretty excited about this module, so let's put it in and see what it does. So this is our LFO++. We're going to mount it right here. And there we go. Okay, so we have our LFO++ installed. Let me show you how we have it connected. Okay, we have our Q167 LFO++ installed and connected. I have a gate connected to it from our MIDI interface. I have the output going to oscillator one so we can modulate the frequency. And I have a control voltage coming from the MIDI interface through this multiple so that the LFO can track the keyboard if we want it to. So right now, if we want to Modulate the oscillator with the LFO. Classic vibrato, right? Uh, we have different waveforms, so that's the triangle. We have a square wave. And then we have a ramp. Now the main reason I bought this was for this section right here, the envelope. So normally you don't want vibrato on all the time. Special effect you could, but I wanted to be able to have what's called delay vibrato, which is something I've seen on a lot of instruments I've had in the past. So the envelope section in here allows you to do that. So if I turn it on, basically by turning that up, now the gate is going to control these. So what are these? Okay, we have sustain time, which is really a delay from the time the gate hits until the transition begins. Transition speed is controlled by the decay. Transitions from no effect to full effect. These also have to be assigned to either the amplifier or the speed. So we're going to do the amplifier first. So that's delay vibrato. I can slow down how fast that kicks in. I can make it kick in a lot quicker. And then of course you can slow down the transition time or you can uh, speed it up so it's an instant. A lot of flexibility with those two controls. Now the, the amplitude is set by how far you turn that to the right. Now you can also turn it to the left. These are, I call them bipolar. Straight up and down there's a little detent, which means it's off. Both of them have that. So if I go minus, we start out with vibrato and then it goes away. Very cool. Now we can also assign these to the speed of the vibrato. And you, you have all the adjustments, how fast that happens. Or it can start fast and go slow. I have another input from our MIDI interface coming out of one of the programmable outputs, and I have it programmed for mod wheel. So the amplitude now of the LFO 
can be controlled by the mod wheel. This sets the, the maximum depth. So now you can be really expressive with your mod wheel, bringing in the vibrato effect. Although it doesn't have to be a vibrato effect, it could be, uh, you could have this run to say your filter cut off. kind of a wah-wah effect. You can connect it to your amplifier. And have a tremolo effect. This oscillator has a very wide range. We have a range switch. I'm actually using it in the middle range called low. It has a lower setting. You might be doing a generative patch and you want uh, just a very slow change in your filter. Extremely slow. So of all the LFOs I have, this, this one is slower than by far than any of the other ones and I love that. That's a very great tool. Um, it also has an audio range. Now, if you modulate an oscillator with audio, you can get some very cool. And the more depth, the complex it sounds. Now you'll notice that the sound doesn't sound the same on each key. Let's say we get that effect. Now it's completely different. We're not tracking the keyboard. So if I turn this attenuator up, and of course I'll have to retune. Now it sounds the same across the keyboard because it's now tracking with the oscillator with the uh, control voltage coming from our MIDI interface. Now, that brings me to another thing. I'm going to take the output of the LFO and I'm going to plug it into the mixer and we're actually going to listen to it. This is different. So what are we hearing here? That's right, folks, it's an oscillator. Tracks perfectly with your keyboard. You can go an octave up. You can go an octave down. You can tune it to an interval. You have multiple waveforms, square wave. So that's incredible. I didn't even know it did that. When I got it, I was just looking for the delay vibrato. Didn't realize that you could also change the speed with this envelope. You could do it negative instead of positive. I didn't even know you could do the mod wheel uh, volume adjustment uh, by remote. So. That was all uh, new to me when I got it, but when I found out it could be an oscillator, wow. So I actually bought a second one just because that's, you can use one as an LFO, one as an oscillator, use them both as an oscillator, or two different LFOs. If you have a small system and you're trying to be space conscious, you could consider one 106 and two 167s, and that would just be four spaces and you'd have three oscillators as opposed to six spaces. Um, that would save space and give you the variety 
in the fact that these do sound different. Uh, I think I, I heard that this one is a sawtooth based oscillator and this is a triangle based oscillator. So they internally, that's an internal thing, but they do, uh, as a result, they do have a little different tone to them, different sound. I really wouldn't want to give up having a Q106 and go all 167. Um, plus we have the, the range switch, so we have, a, we have a wider range with that. So that's the Q167 LFO++, amazing, amazing module, uh, lots of surprises, and I love it. So that was a great module, very, very creative. Appreciate you guys coming and watching these videos. If you're getting anything from them, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and be sure and stay tuned to the next episode, and we'll see you then.